All right. So hmm. I'll keep coming back to this page so that I can monitor the people who have been accepted to the call. Okay. All right. All right. So we we'll start with containerization. Um, maybe let me let me just start with with sort of the theory and the thinking behind dockerization and containerization. Um, I'm sure some of you have 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 run a virtual box or virtual machine before. Basically, virtualization is you have the, par the particular OS you have in. Like now, I'm on Linux, and then you have another product. Let me show you an example. Box. You can also create. A Okay. Yeah. So here I have a Windows 10 um, operating system running on my Fedora. So yeah, you can see I'm running on Fedora. So this is my particular OS. Uh, but with the help of virtualization, I can run another operating system inside the particular operating system I have. So I can run Windows on Linux, and you can run, um, you can do vice versa. You can run Fedora or any other distro on Windows or Mac OS or the sort. So that, that's basically virtualization, where you are granted the power to run multiple OSs on the same host. Because if, if I have this particular Windows one, I can have maybe a Mac OS, I can have another Linux distribution, and I can run all of them on this particular machine. This, this is essentially important, very important when, let's say you have a server and you want to sort of group it um, for different reasons. You, you want to have one particular OS that is running on this particular server that caters a certain need for your customers. Uh, let's say you have, you have some, some, some OS specific software. You know, there's some software that only run on Windows. So you have, you have created a virtualization, a VM of Windows on one particular machine where you can run um, Windows apps on that, particular, on that particular machine. And then you can, buff, you can come back to your host machine that you want, in this case, Linux. And the reasons for this were it's, it has computational efficiency where you can have one particular host where you have one system one outrageous system that has maybe 64 GB RAM and has, I don't know, maybe a hundred terabytes of storage. And through that, you can sort of customize that every particular section here is used for a specific app. And you can have independent systems that are running concurrently. Uh, you can have one, you can have Ubuntu, the other one you can have Windows, the other one you can have Mac OS. So this sort of virtualization helps us to achieve multiple things at the same time. And you don't have to keep upgrading the server over and over or get new hardware just to run a specific a specific platform or a specific app over there. So the disadvantage of this particular thing is because uh, one of the disadvantages is virtualization is expensive because um, you have to have a really powerful machine to do that. Um, if I tried to run uh, two multiple OSs at the same time over here, um, I think we, I, I can't even do anything else with my machine because uh, it's going. It's it, 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 it's computationally expensive. It takes a lot of RAM. It takes a lot of um, CPU cores and a lot of resource uh, resource allocation. And some of these operating systems you have to purchase them. You have to get a Windows Linux a, a Windows license. You have to get maybe a Mac license so that you can set these things up. And the other disadvantage is it's sort of hard to set up. Uh, by hard, I mean there are a lot of steps. If let me show you a description of this, so if you are to start a new, a new, a new, a, a new virtual machine instance, we have to have the name and then type all that. You can select Linux and all that, and then the version. You can just say test, and then next. You can see, and then now you have to allocate the RAM, and then after allocating the RAM. You have to select a virtual hard disk and then, okay, I won't create one because that's just, I mean, I don't have the space and the time to run this, but you, you get the gist where you have to specify these particular um, settings for a particular OS to run perfectly uh, for it to be able to achieve and acquire the task that you have. One of the other disadvantages, okay, yeah, this 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 one and this one are sort of similar. It's computationally heavy. It's really slow and takes a lot of resources to run. And 
another disadvantage of this is that we have multiple kernels. Our kernels are the program that runs between, that is in the, in, in, in the middle of the operating system that acts as a bridge between um, the application and the hardware itself. If, if you tell pandas to read a CSV file, um, the kernel is going to communicate with the pandas and tell it where the file is, at what particular day, where it's stored in the in the in your hard disk and the likes. And for you to be able to run a virtual machine really well or significantly, you're going to have multiple OSs, and each particular OS comes with its own kernel. Um, the mic Microsoft Windows, I mean, has its own kernel, and the Linux distros have their own kernels. And this particular um, having multiple kernels will sort of form a reputation where we can just have one that sort of does the work for us. So come in Docker. Docker is a tool designed to create, deploy, and run applications by using container. Uh, so what, what Docker uses, Docker has Docker images and has Docker containers. Uh, so a Docker image is sort of like the ISO. Um, if you have ever installed an operating system before, I think I have one or you have ever updated your Windows, let me see, files, okay, yeah. So okay. this is an example of an ISO. This is the one that is usually burnt into, into a USB or into an image uh, or into, into a disk so that you can be able to install an OS on your system. That's an ISO file. So we have a similar image and one term for them, they're called images. And these are sort of the, the, the file that contains information about your operating system or that contains information about your application or all the files required to run your, your application. That's a Docker image. And then we have a Docker container. A Docker container is a running instance of the image, right? So if, for example, let's say this, this ISO is for, is for an OS, and we are just using an example that you can't run the ISO like that. Uh, so if this ISO was running that the OS in this particular thing was running, we can call it a Docker, a Docker container. Maybe that's a bad analogy, but I think you get where the image is running is a container. If you don't, um, feel free to ask a question. Oh, view all, let me accept this, admit. Okay, I hope they're in. Right, so I'm guessing. Oh, can you make the slides in presentation mode? Okay, and is it possible to allocate space online and run it online? Um, yes, Christian, that's how AWS works. Uh, I'm going to show you later. Later, no, no, you're giving the other students spoilers, but I'm going to show you later how. Well, okay, I think you'll admit it. But I'm going to show you later how what AWS is and how the images work. That's for a later call. So let's do present. Okay. okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, we have the Docker container. This is a running instance of a Docker image. And now we have a Docker daemon. Let me explain it on the next slide. Uh, so for virtual, for virtual machines, in order for you to run an OS inside another OS, you have the infrastructure. Um, the infrastructure is basically your hardware. Um, your CPU, your RAM, your storage, your keyboard, and the, and the rest. So you have to have that particular infrastructure at the base. And then you have the host operating system. The host operating system is, a, is the operating system that you're using right now. In this particular case, for my case, it's Fedora. For you, it may be something else. And we have the hypervisor. Now for, for virtual machines, the hypervisor is this virtual box that we have here. This one, this is, a, this is a, an example of a, of of a hypervisor. This is the one that runs the OS for you. Um, we have different we have different types, but I don't think you need you need to understand that or you need you need that for this particular course. But yeah, this is a hypervisor. Just know it can be we have an example is VirtualBox. We have virtual VMware also does the same thing. And after that, then we have now the guest OS. Uh, we have the guest OS in this particular case. It was I I, I whatever I closed it. So it's going to boot up. And in this particular case, we have Windows. Windows is the guest OS. And on top of, of Windows now, you have to have beans and uh, binaries and libraries. 
Um, this is sort of the same libraries that you have for Python. Um, for example, Matplotlib and the, and the other things that if you're creating an app that these particular libraries and binaries for people on Windows, uh, they're going to be required to run the app. And then we have the app. But on, on the other side, Docker, the advantages of Docker is, you see, it's, it's all, like all it takes to run is genuinely easy than having a virtual machine. So we have the infrastructure as before, and we have the host operating system. But instead of the hypervisor, we have a Docker daemon. And now we have the apps, the binaries, and the libraries on top of that. So the Docker daemon, this is a service that runs on the host, on the host machine and manages the resources that require to run your particular container. Now for us, this particular container is this. So this app one, app two. But if we are using virtual machines, we'd have to have the guest OS and then all this. You can see because we don't have this um, computationally expensive um, software here, the hypervisor and the guest OS is over here. Docker is significantly easier to run and faster because you, you only need to install Docker on your machine. And you can do that, it's just like a piece of software. And this particular service is the one that is going to manage uh, the RAM for you. It's going to manage the resources that are required by this particular app. In our case, app one, app two, app three. And it's also going to make sure that app one is isolated. That app one only does the job that it requires to do. It doesn't spill out and do other things on the other side. So yeah, that's what the Docker daemon does. Think, yeah. So this service runs on the host. It manages resources required by the images and ensure that, ensures that each container is isolated. Right? That I hope you've understood this. Sure. Sure. Yeah? Yeah, please. I, I don't understand very well the difference between APP1 and APP2, please. Still don't oh. Understand oh, here, you mean, oh, this, 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 no. this is just an application. Let's say you had, um, in your case, uh, for last week project, let's say you had the stream lit up, right? Uh, the dashboard, and you had the machine learning model part. Or, uh, yeah, th these are just, just think of them as different applications. Think of how you could run maybe a Firefox here, and you can run some other application here. And so you can just write a code that runs in this particular container and write another one that runs in this container. I hope I've answered your question. I okay. know who asked. Okay, yes, great. Thank you. Oh, okay, Christian, yeah, you're the one who was. So, yeah. And so the advantages of Docker, it's lightweight and it's very portable um, because you only, you're only going to need the Docker image for this particular app one. You're only going to need this particular one if you want your app to run. So it's very lightweight and it's very portable. And because it's lightweight, it's very fast. Um, it's significantly fast for you to launch a Docker image it's, it's going to take milliseconds whereas the whereas running the guest os here if you try to boot this one up or is it this one up uh you see I, I haven't even shut it down completely i think you can see the silhouette of windows inside here because booting it is going to take um minutes one or two and yeah regardless of the system that you have just because the processes are slow and all that if you have a better machine it might be slightly slightly faster but be assured it's going to take more than minutes but you can't compare minutes to seconds that the docker does and docker uses the host's kernel now for docker here uh, the docker daemon is going to use the operating system kernel and it's not going to have to rely on the guest os has its own kernel and the host operating system has its own kernel the system and can con it configures it to set a lot uh, resources and the paths and the locations for files in that particular in that particular container and one other advantage that docker has over the virtualization and one of the major things that it's used in this particular day is i don't know if you guys have been maybe in a project at school uh, where you're going to present and or your computer doesn't have charge or the battery battery dies or something so you transfer the code to another person's computer and then it was running on your computer but once you take it to the other computer it doesn't run so this this was always an excuse at, at um in my uni days when i was in campus so the excuse was it was, but it was running on my computer i don't know why it's not running on your computer 
so it prevents that. And one container, if I had a container and I shared it to you guys, uh, you just need to build it and it's going to run regardless of whatever system you have, regardless of any, any things that you have in your particular system. And it, it has easier dependency matching. Dependencies are what you require for the project for the project to run. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the requirements.txt. So those are sort of if you create a requirement.txt um, for your particular Python app, um, the the libraries in that particular requirements.txt are your dependencies for your project to run. Where your project cannot run if you don't have these particular libraries in the requirements.txt um, installed. So with that, it just it, it it makes it easier because you just have everything in one particular package, and you don't need to go and source things outside for them to run. So I think that took it is so bad. Uh, so let's go to a Docker file, okay? And reach yourself and ask a question. Um. Do you have a question? Or if you're, if you're talking, I can't hear you. So you can just write it in the message box. Oh, hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I was wondering if I built a Docker file on a Linux uh, operating system, mm -hmm. would another person be able to run the, you know, the Docker file or the container file on another operating system? Yes. As long as that person has Docker installed, they just need to install Docker. Okay. And then they they run command. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Malet had shared that last last time. So last time. the command. I hope you can see my screen here, right? Uh, the command is yeah. Docker build, and then build um, location, and then the name of the image. I think I'm forgetting a tag here. It might be a dash t. So yeah, um, with this particular command, um, as long as you have Docker. In, in the report, let, let me show you, let me give you an example. Uh, so okay. in my case, um, we have this, let me clear this. Um, clear this. Just, just leave that as is. Uh, so in this particular directory, you can see we have ls-l and then, yeah, you can see we have the Docker file here. As long as you have this in your machine, all you have to do is Docker build it. And I'm going to show you an instance. Um, so uh, let, let's just go to the Docker, the Docker file first, and then we are going to go into running the Docker image and how to stop one and what it entails and the commands that you can run while you're using Docker. Uh, so let's go to Virtual Studio. Okay. Let's leave that alone. And for the Docker file, this one is we come here and then do cut Docker. All right. So yeah. Um, so this is a Docker file for this particular application that we have here, the community manager dashboard. And we have um first of all, we have different images. Uh we have the different images are sort of like the same ISO thing, but these are ones that you don't have to create for yourself. These are ones that have been created and somebody has posted them online. I think they, they, there is a Docker site where you can get various images that people have built for various specific apps. You can see here we have the Python 3.61. It changes. If you want, you can get Python 3.7, you can get Python 3.7. Mm -hmm. depending on the needs that you want or on the needs of your application. You can see here on this other Docker file, we have um, another image, but this one is from Google App Engine that has Python. And this is sort of has, I think, Python 3.7 is So you can use different images and you can import them using from. And once you come back here, we have a working directory. This is sort of, you define a directory inside this particular instance. Think, think of an image as a stripped down version of an operating system where it only has the necessary things to run and it only has specific informations and all the things that are required only to run for that particular app. 
let me let me give an example. Um, think of an operating system as a whole, or a VM, a virtual machine. Maybe think of a virtual machine as a house, a standalone house or a mansionette, where in this particular house you have the kitchen, you have the bedrooms, you have the sitting rooms, uh, you have a spe specific plumbing for that particular house. Um, you have maybe a compound for that particular house and all that it all outside people. And think of a Docker container as an apartment where, yes, it offers, it, it offers protection from outside people and it, also, it offers protection from the weather. But instead of apartments, apartment buildings, you get that they use the same, they share the same infrastructure. They, they, they share the same sort of waste manage, manage, management system. They share the same um, water system and all that. And maybe they, they, they even share the same compound where you can only get apartment that sort of fits your need. You can get a one bedroom apartment. You can get, yeah, a one bedroom apartment and the rest. You, you can basically it, but a house comes with sort of everything. So I hope that that, that explanation is clear. And if you have a question, feel, feel free to ask. Uh, so you have the working here and this sort of the, so you get it in the particular image that you have that, that you want to use. And you can see here we are copying the requirements text inside the Docker image from this particular directory. And we install them, right? Use a command run. We have copy everything in this directory to the app directory over here and expose port 80. I'm sure you guys know what ports are. Um, this, this sort of showing Oh, no, this this is this is production level code. Uh, I mean, this is code that has been used for a project that is running right now. And the reason we've used port 80, um, there are two ports. We have port 80, and we have port 40, 443. Port 4, yeah, 443 is the port necessary for HTTPS. Um, I think you should have an example somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. Um, we should have, you can see up here on, on my URL, we have HTTPS and before before HTTPS, the S basically means secure. But before that, we had HTTP. I don't know if you guys can remember that. Now HTTP means it's less, yeah, you see, protocol. It just means it's not as secure as HTTPS. And these two particular systems and technologies use, use different ports. So port 80, is it? Is the code here? Port 80 is for HTTPS and port 443. Oh, port 80 is for HTTP and port 443 is for HTTPS. That's why we've, we've, exto we've exposed these particular ports. This means it's going to be accessible if you add HTTP before the URL and HTTPS before the URL. And now this is just, you can run Linux command inside using the run command. So this just, you say run, and then you write the command here. Now, some of these are just Linux commands. So we make a directory and call it streamlit, and then move this particular file here, and the configuration file over there. And then you have the entry point. Because the Docker container is like its own operating system, it also has ports exposed. And now you have to, it has ports that you have to access through. And that's how you use the entry point. After running the command, use these particular ports for entry and change the local host address. That's basically what this means. But Docker, different Docker files require different Docker settings. If, you, if you're not really um, pushing your code for production or for it to run in a server, you do not need this. So you can just, uh, I mean, one of the example was you can do CMD, then executable, and then you do do justice. We do streamlit. No, no control Z. Control Z. Okay. From here, and then we we'll do just streamlit run community dash, and then you can finish it if you want it to run on your local machine. All right. So let, let me show you guys an instance of uh, a Docker container that is running online. Let's SSH to AWS. Community dash. Okay. Yeah. 
So this SSH, this goes into an AWS instance. Uh, so for the guy who was asking, how oh, Christian, I think, was it Christian? Yes. Is it possible to allocate space online and run it online? Uh, so give me a minute. Let's go to AWS console. Um, see, instances. Actually, AWS uses that because uh, you need a particular it's going to require me to log in. Yes. Right. Um, so the way you can have instance types. This opens in here. I think this is okay. I should come to the images, my but uh, but now I'm back. Um, it's sort of just think of a huge sub that you can sort of choose images that you require on these page loads. Just so, you know, you don't own, you do not want to bring it in. Okay, yeah, here we go. Let's go. Just this. Let's get this forever. Ah, okay. So you can see we have a lot of images running, and the one that, the one that I'm so SSH is, is sort of going and accessing that but that's why one of the advantages of linux is that it can do that seamlessly if you are to search into a server or into some other instance you'd have to create um in windows you'd have to use party i think there's a software that does that but it's it's, it's it takes a really long time to be able to achieve that so you can see here, um, we have you have a parent system. Let check forever again. Okay. As you can see, there are different particular images. It depends on what you want to run with a particular image. Um, with the onset of ML, ML uh, machine learning has been specifically tailored to run machine learning projects. Um, we have ones that they can't be installed with anything that you would need. Um, they installed with, um, they install, they have Python, they have TensorFlow, they have Keras, they have PyTorch, they have all these particular files that you'd require. Now you can see we have the Amazon Linux AMI system. Now this this sort of a nice thing where it sort of tells you to choose which particular OS to run in your server. So instead of having one particular server for every OS, they use virtualization where you're only going to get a particular section of the OS that can cannot really communicate with the other loads there. You can use Microsoft on um, the Windows Server and you can use CentOS. So in our case, um, the, ones that, the one that you have searched into is an Ubuntu server. You can see here. Right? Yeah. And so that you understand that Docker is its own system and it works for its own else. For it by itself, you can see that Docker here has its own IP address. Um, the IP address is sort of information, like if, if we had this particular app running, you know, here, if we had this particular app running and this particular code was running in your Docker, so you'd come, um, write this particular IP, so you know how Streamly, Streamly runs at port 8501. So if you wanted to open a, a Streamly app on your end, you'd go to localhost, 
8501 and run it from there. But in, if your Streamlit application was inside a Docker container, you'd come and search for the Docker IP address and go 172.17.01. Yeah, the zero one and then the port. The port that you've exposed in this case 880 if you are running this particular code. I think that makes sense. Let me see if there's a question. Okay. Ah, uh, can you explain the file structure or the necessary files and how they are organized when you want to build an image? Uh, now it doesn't have to have any any particular any particular structure. In my case, let me, I, ha I have different apps that have a uh, Docker. So let me just minimize this and then come into the community manager dash, right? Okay, so let's do it here, right here. The only, the only file you need to run on your local machine for you to have Docker is a, see we have the, so we have Docker file. Okay, no, put a Docker container and have a Docker image in your directory any specific files or anything to play you just have to have the docker file inside so you can see here if we do ls dash l you can see this these are the files that i have on this particular machine uh, i mean on this particular folder and it's going to add them one by one and if you go to another directory that has just go to i think here review review was also in in the docker right okay and then we do ls dash lh you can see different files right even a folder called abubaka and then all we need is a docker file so if we do this um and then let me open this in in in, 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 in vs code so that you can see it's different we do docker file okay, that was it okay so see that this file is different from the other one we have the streamly run dot review prod and on the other one, we are running a different instance. We have different run community, uh, community dash. So that's basically it. You only need to have this particular one file in in your particular directory, and then you can be able to build a Docker image. Um, does that answer your question? Um, did I answer your question, Ethan? Isani. Cool. And so back to back to our instance and once you install docker in the terminal you're going to get the docker command so yeah once we do docker docker container Um, so we have the Docker container, ls. This is a running instance of the image. Once we do Docker container and we do ls, we can see that this particular container is running, right? And so how it's running, and we can see it. Once we do tmax a dash t, I think that's a command, not <laughs> tmax a dash t. Um, this is, Atimax is just a tool that you use on Linux so that you can have uh, different instances of the terminal running at the same time. So if we do community dash, I hope nobody's using this. <laughs> uh, if they are, we can see that this is fetching or this is running as it's supposed to be. So, okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me just get rid of this one. It will be B. Okay, and exit this one. Install from here and then use another one that is not being used. So that's a search to do one. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a search here. I doubt this one. Anybody is using this one. All right. So you see, we still have the same Docker is installed. So we have the IP address for Docker. And this is a different one. Now, if we come to AWS, what is it? We come to the instances here. We've gotten from the community dash into the before review. 
Yeah, let's do the same thing. Let's do Docker container ls. Now you see we still we have the image called review and the container that is running. So if we do two marks again, ls, we can see review interview, and then we can do tmax a dash t review interview and we can see that the the, the container okay can't scroll up but you can see that the container itself is running you can see we're getting the pandas warning um as you're running that particular code to that and then all right so if we do container image ls we can see oh no i mean docker 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 my bad uh we can do docker image ls you can see we have the review image and this particular image is the image that we've oh okay i'll show you later so but that that particular image is an image that has been de created by this particular um config file no not that one but this one the reveal let me just close this one for convenience's sake um yeah so this particular image is our that is running and you can see i've called it review and it's also importing the python image that we require that's here the one that we imported python 3 buster and you can see it's the one here tag 3. Mm -hmm. Buster, and then we can do docker container stop container stop no more yeah we haven't given it the argument so I come here copy the id and then paste it. right you can see it has stopped and if we run the command that goes takes us to tmax is it here yeah. um we can see that now it has stopped running it's not here at all all right so let me just exit there and then i'm going to remove these particular images so that i can show you how to run a docker image on an aws assistance or how you build one I think. so i'm just checking for questions okay none so far so we do you see we, we do docker image ls and docker container ls to see which particular containers are running now for us you see we have another command called docker container stop and does that and we can do docker mm -hmm. yeah yeah container i was remembering the command uh prune um what this does it's going to stop yeah warning this will remove all stopped containers and okay let, let me let me just do no first so that i can show you something um so i haven't removed any container because i've selected no but if we try to remove um the review one here if 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 we try to remove this particular one um wrong command um if we did docker image remove and then that particular container you see same id uh, i mean that particular image same id it's going to shoot an error error response here unable to delete this one our uh, image is being used by a stopped container um and you can see this particular id is it the same i don't think so i don't know why they don't use the same one but it cannot run because it's been stopped um this particular container is using this particular image it's a running it's a running version of the image so if we do docker prune container first right and then we do yes and then we do that come here do this and then add this first keyword and yeah you can now, now we've deleted the, that particular image from there and if we do docker image alas i don't think it should be there yeah you can see review is gone so let us remove the python image as well um so that we can build a new image from scratch do docker image remove that one as well all right um, the buster one is 
is deleted. It has been untagged, and then it's been deleted. Let's go back to Tmax. Um, the advantage of Tmax is you can have, I mean, you see how we are running this on a terminal. If I exist, if I exited this terminal, whatever process is happening in this particular terminal closes automatically. What Tmax does, it enables a, a process or a particular thing to run when it's on the other side. You can even use it to train to train a model. Just even if a connection breaks, if a disconnect from this particular from this particular terminal and from this particular EC2 instance, then it's still going to keep running until I recon reconnect it. So if you ever if you ever in a situation that you're running something on the cloud, always use Tmax. The other one is Screen. Um, let me just Google them. Um, we have Tmax here and Tmax and Screen. Yeah and screen these two will enable you to run something in the background in a in a way that if, if any connection issue happens you can be able to come back to where you are and i'm going to, sh to show you uh, you, you saw how i logged in after after a connection and then everything was still running let me attach that and then we do ls so we can go to the commands that we had earlier the first one is build docker build dash t is a tag and then the dot means this particular directory and once we run this you can see it starts by importing the python buster and you can see why we use aws the aws speeds are extremely fast so it's going to get a, the library python and it's going to get this particular image from that python library and then it's going to build it on itself so we have to wait as this completes So if anyone has, let me share the screen so that you don't miss anything. Extracting, right? And then you can see now, after after that that has been done, our status has done a new image for, yeah? You can see working there has been added to the, that particular container and let it finish. Now it's 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 installing the dependencies that we have. So in our particular case, let's go to the code. Uh, you can see it changed or let, let it finish and then we'll reiterate. But you can see right in this particular case now it's installing the requirements that that were added into the that have been specified in the requirements file so i don't i don't think i can scroll up as it in, as it's installing because it's just going to show an error let's see whether we have any questions okay um, it was a Docker image. Review was a Docker image. Um, the Docker file is just something that you specify to have the commands, okay? Yeah, to just sort of the guidelines um, to tell it to do this, do that, and the rest, like how you do on a, CME, on a CML, how you specify this particular command and that. And it doesn't have any extension, so it's just Docker. Docker file, I mean, like so, and make sure it has been written in a certain way, like that. Yeah, that's how you specify, that's how you name it. So let's go here. Yeah. Um, it's just a warning, just ignore it. Why is it taking sweet time? How do you come by an image? You build it. Uh, if you have this Docker file that contains the instructions that are required for your image, you just run the command that I had earlier, this particular command. Um, docker build, and then dash t, and then app name, you can say Robert. <laughs> say Robert, and then you specify the directory. And this directory makes sure, uh, so the directory might be, let me just say directory. Yes. Okay. directory like that and make sure that the directory has a docker file inside if it if it doesn't have a docker file inside then it won't run answer your question right cool now so yeah um let's sort of go up oh wait i can't oh i guess it doesn't have a scrollable um from the copy instance so um, you come here you see we have the copy that means copy these particular files here into into the container itself the review container that you've called and then expose port 80 right um expose port 80 
and then make there in this particular container you can see that the commands that we have specified are running and if we do docker image now docker image alas you can see that the image now has been recreated about a minute ago right and then if we do docker container container ls nothing is running yet but if we run this particular command that's a build one and then we run this docker run dash p this sort of specify the ports says um the port from the docker itself um the port 80 that we've exposed here push it out as docker as port 80 or map it to port 80 of the host machine so this port 80 is going to be if if we go to the i'll show you a bit so review and then you can see it runs and let me let me i have to stop sharing my screen a bit uh, so that i can sort of keep some something private so give me a minute Ooh. So if you have a question, you can unmute yourself as I'm doing this and I can help you answer um, and I can answer your question for you. So you can just unmute yourself. Okay. And so I can show my screen using this a tub. And here, yeah, now you can see that the app is running just because you've exposed it. And if that means if you go to the URL um to the I think you can say that if you go to the IP address, that's where we have this particular terminal running, and then you open it in your browser, then that is going to happen. It's going to run, and now you can continue up as long as you've exposed that particular port. So let me just stop that. Stop sharing and cancel out. Mm. Okay, so come back here, then share my entire screen. Okay, so now that that's running, you just go to the URL and you can open it and it's going to run from there. So, right. And if you do Docker container now, excuse me, container alas, yeah, you can get um, our review is up and running. So yeah, we have, and just so you know, um, but I, I don't want to go into the details, not to, to, con to confuse you guys more um we have we can run multiple containers that communicate with each other and by that we use the docker compose and we sort of specify them like this i think no, this one hasn't been done well we sort of do services and we can build dash like that and then we can select another app like after that we can sort of add like so can add storage can add another application so these particular applications you can configure them that every single container talks to another container. And that, that ensures that everything just runs at it, as it's supposed to be. And so yeah, I think that concludes my session. And if you have a question. Um, okay, if any in, in, no, they don't. No, they don't. They just handle that on their end. Um, they just do that for you. And you're only going to get the OS itself. You're only going to get that particular instance that is isolated for you. But you can also run a virtual machine on there if you want to. Although I, I don't know why you'd want to do that. I mean, running that.
that's how many three three operating systems <laughs> uh, at once is sort of too much and beats the purpose. Right? Anyone else with a question? No one. Think, Milky. Uh, what do you mean it gives you a readme only status when when you tried to run your dockerization command? Oh, okay. Uh, can you can you uh, just just um, uh, put that, that question on Rocket Chat and some sort of screenshot about the error and what is occurring? Because once ha, ha, were you running Docker as 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 an admin? I mean, with a, with a, with a elevated permission. Yes, the um, robot Docker file has no no extension, and it's one it's one word. Uh, so the problem with using um, Docker on on Windows subsystem for Linux is the way the way WSL handles ports. Is bad. And for you getting access to that particular port is going to be an issue because of how Windows is configured and how the Linux port works. So that that may be causing an error. So you can try running it on Windows first, and you still get the same error. Then hit me up. Just send a message and tag me on Rocket Chat, and then I'll get back to you. Cool, Milky. I mean, I, I also used um, Windows Subsystem for Linux, and it's not it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing, and. I'm biased because as a dev, I think you should be you, you should you should be using it. I have to use Linux. I don't know why you're not. Uh, so uh, yeah, Azaria, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, when uh, using Docker Compose, um, are we actually using it to run the same instance of? Like the same container, the same like multiple containers, um, doing the exact same thing, or do we use Docker Compose to actually um, separate the tiers? Like have one container of the back end uh, and one container for the front end. Good. Um, oh, that, that's a very good question, and it's right in the ballpark. So you can use Docker com Docker Compose to run one particular app on its own. Let me give you an example. Like in this particular Docker Compose. You see, I only have one particular app, the Dash app. I think this one should be indented as well. Yeah. So I, I only have one particular app here, Dash. And you can see I specified the requirements here, the bills, the ports, and the volume inside. And in this particular case, we have multiple of them, where we have the Redis, the DB, and the storage. So you can, you, you can actually build a Docker Compose file to run one particular instance, and you can have them to run multiple particular instance. And in this particular case, this particular app was was a, a front end. So this the dash API here was a back end that has been built in Python. And you can see, yeah, it's its own app called Web App. And if you go to the next one here, the oh called Web. And if you go to the next one here, Web App, this is also the front end now that has been done in in Node.js. You can see we have node environment here. So yeah, you, you, you can you can you can achieve both two things at the same time. Did I answer your question? Yeah, no, yeah, thank you. Cool. Um any questions? Any more questions? Going once, <laughs> like so, some sort of auctioneer. Going twice. Uh, you don't have any question. Um What's the line from marriages where they say, um, speak up now or forever hold your breath? I'm joking. Just if you have any question, um, hit me up on Rocket Chat or tag me on Rocket Chat and we'll get back to you. Uh, so that, that has been my session. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, talk to you soon. And all the best on the project, by the way. So yeah, that's that. Let me stop recording. And we're done. Bye. Stop recording.